outstretched arm and redeem us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and forgive us all our sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are
to the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lived and reigned with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Malachi. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from a stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you to the glory of God. For I tell you, that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again it is said, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Europe and on the earth, the stress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your head, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the sun is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, and to stand for the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Christ. In the name of our God, the Holy Trinity, let us confess our faith. I believe, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of the Father before all worlds, God of God, Light of light, fairy God of fairy God, be God not made, be in one substance of the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation, be now to heaven, and is crowned by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also of our sins, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again from the world of the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again for the world, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will not be in heaven. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together the scriptures and glorified,
great joy to be with you. I'm only preaching from here because of the microphone, which is not available at the pulpit. So no statements in this position. I bring you greetings from the International Lutheran Council, and I'll have a chance to speak with, I hope, many of you, all of you, most of you, uh, after the service at an apocalypse time. But I have an even greater honor now, uh, the greatest honor of all, and that is to preach the blessed word of our dear God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In this gospel reading from Luke, that our, we heard a moment ago, our Lord Jesus says bluntly that heaven and earth will pass away. And there's no getting around that fact. Heaven and earth is the Bible's way of talking about all of nature. The whole world order, the entire universe. It means the same thing as we said in the Creed, especially in the first article, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. These words mean that God created everything that exists. So when Jesus says that heaven and earth will pass away, he means again that the world order, the universe is passing away. And of course, if heaven and earth are passing away, that uh, leaves us with a problem. We're left with nothing to stand on. If earth is passing away, that necessarily includes us earthlings. And even if the end of the cosmos doesn't occur, until some more distant time, each one of us still faces our own personal end of the world, death. In the book of Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament, King Solomon, and remember he's the wisest of the wise, tells us about his search for purpose and meaning in life. He had gone after and attained pretty much everything that he ever wanted. Knowledge and wisdom, fame and power, the most scintillating of pleasures. But always he came to the same conclusion. It's all vanity, futile. Chasing after the wind, he says. A person may pursue all of these things, but the result is always the same. You die. And all that you have, like the wind, passes out of your grasp. Now, as if this weren't bad enough, it gets worse. When the blessed God created the heavens and the earth, when his hands formed the dry land, when he spoke sun and moon and all the plants and animals into existence, and finally when he shaped in his own image and likeness his most glorious creation, man and woman, what did he say? It is good. It is very good. God's purpose was not to create a world only to destroy it after a time. He created it good, very good. He created it to endure. So where then does the cause of death and destruction of this physical world lie? Certainly not with God, but with man, with our first father and mother, but also with us. They turned away from the Lord's true word, which had created the world, and they exchanged it for a false and destructive word of the evil one. But what they did, we also do. For we also ignore and change, or try to change, 
or trying to slide by God's word in our own lives and in our own hearts daily. We say it in the Catechism. We daily sin much. And all of this is what lies behind Jesus' words that heaven and earth will pass away. Our shameful rebellion against God has brought corruption to the heavens and the earth. Not only is it going to all end, it's our fault that it will end. We have a God and Creator who simply refuses to let us be destroyed by our sin. He was willing to do whatever was necessary in order to save the loss, no matter how much it would cost him. And this is the amazing wonder that we remember year round and every Sunday. So intent on saving the lost ones, God does not even spare his own beloved son, but delivers him up for us all. God the Son entered into this world that was passing away in order to rescue us, and he rescued us by passing away. He who could not die did die. He who need not suffer did suffer. He who was pure innocence itself became guilty of our guilt and sin by taking it as his own on the cross. And by the destruction of death that he suffered, he overcame the destruction of death that is the rightful due of all humanity, of me, of you. With this glorious truth in mind, we really should look at the rest of that verse in the Gospel. Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but that's not all he says. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Now this means more than that his words are true and then for, therefore entirely reliable. That is true. But Jesus is saying that his words are of the same nature and power as the words that God spoke when he created the world in the first place. God spoke and so it was. Let there be light and there was light. Jesus speaks, and so it is. His words produce and do what they say. The words of Jesus, you see, are not just facts that are eternally true. But more importantly, the words of Jesus are words that have been spoken to you. And so now you who believe, have become as eternal as the words of Jesus, as eternal as Jesus himself. Even as his words will never pass away, so you will never pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but you will never pass away because the words of Jesus have had their say on you. So, take the dying thief as an example. Jesus said to the thief on the cross next to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. Who could ever think that the words of this bloody, bruised, dying Jesus of Nazareth could be true? Especially since he was talking to a confessed and convicted criminal. Him in paradise. But yes, Jesus spoke the word of absolution, forgiveness, to that thief, and all of his.
his sins were forgiven, washed away in the blood of the Lord Jesus who was dying next to him. So even though he died an agonizing death, he did not pass away, but was delivered to paradise. So it was at your baptism words of Jesus had their effect on you. The eternal words of Jesus connected with the water were proclaimed over you, and you have become as eternal as the word of the Lord Jesus, which will never pass away till heaven and earth pass away. Your sins also were washed from you, and the promise made to that thief on the cross also came to be yours. You will be with me in paradise. Even as you hear the same words of Jesus coming from the mouth of the pastor, I forgive you all your sins. These are the words of the eternal and enduring Christ Jesus that will not pass away. And they recreate you make you into eternal men and women of God who will never pass away. It's interesting, at least to me, that Jesus uses the plural words, my words will never pass away, and not just the singular word in this verse that we've been pondering. Our dear Savior Jesus does not simply stop at one word or even just a few words, but instead he keeps on speaking them to us. So even now in the sermon, this very sermon, Jesus speaks using this frail stumbling mouth, not merely to tell you truths or to teach you a lesson or two, but it is the power of Jesus' word preached which causes you to stop clinging to the things that are here today but tomorrow are gone, as if those things were what your life was all about. Jesus' words come to you in the preaching in order to recreate you, week by week, giving you renewed faith in the Lord Jesus and never pass. And Jesus is not done speaking yet. He keeps his enduring words coming to you now as we receive the holy sacrament of his body and blood. His words say, this bread is my body and this wine is my blood. Take, eat, and drink given for you for the forgiveness of sin. And because his words, which cannot pass away, have said it, we know that this is indeed his body, and that this wine is indeed his very blood, and that it is shed for the sins of the world. Jesus, in this eating and drinking, we who are perishing become imperishable. These bodies which go toward the grave are resurrected to eternity by this eternal word and promise. Jesus says that heaven and earth will pass away, but his words are greater than heaven and earth, and they will never pass away. He is telling us where our eternal hope, where our eternal joy are truly to be found. Right here. Wherever his words flow richly upon you. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding guard our hearts minds in Christ Jesus, the life everlasting.
peace from above for our salvation, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this holy house, and for all whom the Holy Spirit offers here in their service and praise, for all the children of the Church, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the President of these United States, all our government officials and military personnel, and all rulers of all nations, that peace and the word and will of God might be on their hearts and minds, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Matthew, David, and Carl, our shepherds and bishops in Christ, that they might be upheld by the Holy Spirit as ministers of the gospel, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the enemies of Christ's church and his gospel, that they might nevertheless be blessed by him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the sick and the suffering in our midst, especially the Scarf, Lynn, Ed, Barb, Ann, Brenda, Bob, Megan, Ted, Carl, Nathan, Dan, Tom, Donna, Kevin, Ryan, Steve, Mark, Margaret, David, Margie, Landon, Tabitha, Mira, Ezekiel, Milo, Rich, Jeff, and Rhonda. That Christ would be their good physician of body and soul in every need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. For all people in need or distress throughout the world, for all those to whom death is drawing near, and for us all, that when our last hour may come, we may depart this life with the confidence of a true faith, a right, devout, and holy hope, and together with all the faithful, be seated at the wedding feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, O Lord, thank, deliver, and preserve us. For to you alone we ascribe all glory, honor, and power, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and who opened the way for us to everlasting life. Therefore, with angels, archangels, all saints, and the whole company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Testament, 
which is shed for you for the remission of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you and keep you steadfast in the true faith, even as your life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. We'll give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.